What's up, everyone? Welcome to the Thursday, June 22nd edition of the MLB Sims video. I'm your host, Adam Scherer. You can follow me on Twitter at ShipMyMoneyDFS. And we only have a three-game night slate tonight, but we're still going to walk through the MLB Sims tool, see how it's handling the short slate. Uh, should be interesting. I think that these can be difficult and also fun slates to play. Uh, obviously, with only six games going, you're going to end up in spots that are a little bit more uncomfortable. You're going to get higher concentrations of ownership. Uh, coming into a lot of different players. So uh, it's pretty. it should be pretty interesting to see how the Sims tool handles that. To uh, to, to start, I crunched 2,000 lineups. They are all 5-2 stacks. Obviously, uh, that's not perfect. If you're using this yourself, you probably want to mix it up a little bit more, replicate the field a little bit better. But for the sake of time and this video, I did all 5-2 stacks. I did use exposure caps on each player. That is 10 to 15% higher than their projected ownership uh, to give Fantasy Cruncher enough room to run and make the lineups, but also still approximate the field. So it should still give us a pretty good look at the best way to approach this slate, at least from a five-man stacking perspective. So we're going to walk through some of the top stacks, some of the top players, see who's showing up the most. If you're watching this on YouTube, remember to give hit the thumbs up video uh, below. That helps quite a bit. And if you're watching on Twitter, please hit the thumbs up button. If uh, you enjoy the video, that also helps us out a lot. I will also drop a link for the Sims tool below the YouTube or below the video on Twitter, and the link will be pinned below on YouTube as well. If you're looking to check it out for yourself and use it for your own DFS lineups, but we can take an early look at how things are shaping up for tonight's slate, uh, starting with some of the top simulated ROI lineups. Here at the top, we have a five-man Yankee stack with two Marlins. Uh, looking at the top stacks tool. In terms of stack score, we have the Yankees coming in at the bottom against Brian Wu, Miami coming in third against Mitch Keller, but uh, neither team getting tons of ownership relative to the slate. Miami is the third highest owned team. The Yankees are the fifth highest owned team. So you do get a nice balance of ownership there. And then from a pitching standpoint, we're going to Domingo Armand and Shane McClanahan. Uh, looking at the top pitchers tool, McClanahan is projected to be the most popular pitcher. Then you have four pitchers, including Armand, that are all projected around 30, 30 to 40 percent ownership. So you're not saving much in the way of ownership and pitching, but there's not a lot you can do there. So overall, this is a relatively contrarian lineup in the context of the slate. You see here in the own ownership sum column, it is lower owned than most of the other teams here at the top. Next, we have a five man Tampa stack, two man Seattle. Five-man Miami, three-man Seattle, Seattle-Miami again flipped, uh, Seattle-Tampa Bay. So you're seeing a nice mix of different stacks here at the top. If we look at the uh, player exposures, so first we want to use the quick favorite button, select the top 150 lineups, go to exposures. Uh, in terms of individual players, you have Shane McClanahan at the top, Julio Rodriguez, your highest-owned hitter at 55%. Brian Wu is the second our second most exposed pitcher at 47%, followed by Garrett. No issues with any of the pitcher exposures, pretty much in line with what the field's doing, where McClanahan is coming in at 59% owned. Garrett is at 38, Wu's at 37. From a hitter perspective, Seattle is number one in stack score tonight against Herman. Makes sense that we're getting a lot of Julio Rodriguez at the top. Uh, one other thing to note is that in the lineups I built, I did allow for one hitter against the opposing pitcher. So... That could be a reason we're seeing Julio Rodriguez show up so much. Maybe he's being used as a one-off even in the Mingo Armand lineups, which on a three-game slate, I think is perfectly fine. Uh, and one other note, looking at the overall player exposures here, I've mentioned it on the previous videos I've done that typically if individual hitters are coming in a lot higher than 30% owned, it is a red flag to me. It's something that I want to make sure that the lineups I've input into the sim are representative of the field and that I didn't make a mistake somewhere. But on a three-game slate, I'm not as concerned. It's not really that surprising that you're seeing somebody like Julio Rodriguez stand out, you know, quite a bit above that 30% mark. Cal Raleigh, Paredes, Hernandez, Kelnick, all in that 30 to 40% range. So again, uh, not surprising that you're getting elevated ownership to the hitters, but they are for the most part still sticking in the 30 to 40% range, even the guys at the top with the exception of Rodriguez. So happy to see that. Now looking at the top five-man stacks, Seattle, again, number one in stack score for us, and they are coming in a ton. Almost 50% of the top 150 simmed lineups are Seattle stacks. Miami coming in second. They are third in stack score. Tampa Bay is second in stack score. They're coming in third. So not surprising to see those teams at the top. If you were to sort the lineups a little bit differently, you'll probably see that change a little bit. If instead of sorting by simulated ROI, you sort by win percentage and then take the top 150 you see the stacks flatten out a bit. 
Uh, Seattle down to 31%. Miami, you see the Yankees come up, which is interesting. Maybe something to keep in mind for your large field tournaments is that the Yankees aren't the best in terms of simulated ROI because they're not cashing that often. But when they do well, uh, they are getting to the top of tournaments a bit more. Same goes for Kansas City. You see you see both of those teams sneak up a bit. So um, I think there's a couple of things that tells us. One, what I was just saying, when they do come through, it's easier for them to win tournaments, which makes sense. But also maybe good teams to be using as two-man or, or three-man stacks um, just because you know, you're still getting exposure to these you know pretty powerful leverage spots, but not necessarily going all the way uh, with the stack. Now, going back to the top simulated ROI lineups, taking the top 50 and looking at some individual player exposures. Uh, we have Julio Rodriguez, everybody pretty much neutral to negative, which isn't really surprising on a three-game slate. You're getting ownership coming into pretty much every good player, so uh, it's harder to find guys that are really going on their own. But Julio Rodriguez, Cal Rowley, Teoscar Hernandez, uh, all from Seattle showing up at the top. Not surprising here. You're getting uh, Salvador Perez and Bobby Witt. Anybody that's watched any of my shows when I talk about Kansas City, I think I mention it every time. I get to KC a lot because of these two guys, because it's so hard to find good catchers and good shortstops and you get Salvador Perez and Bobby Witt. So not surprising to see them uh, towards the top of the individual player ROI here as well. Then you get more Seattle, uh, Joey Wendell showing up, Harrison Bader showing up. Um, so pretty much what you would expect in terms of player ROI based on, you know, where we're getting with the top stacks as well uh, in terms of pitcher exposures uh, specifically, because uh, we didn't really walk through that. You can go, you go here, you filter, player position contains pitcher, and now you get, that's not right. Um, oh, player contains P, so we need pitcher contains P. And now you get uh, Shane McMahonhan, 63%, Wu, Garrett coming in second, Keller. We are fading Domingo Roman. Uh, he's projected right now for 33.5% ownership. Uh, we're only getting him about 16%. Not surprising since we were seeing how much Seattle we're getting to. So that does seem to be the the stand that we'd be taking if the slate started right now, is getting under the field on Herman, getting over the field on the Mariners. Uh, again, in your larger field stuff, the Yankees and Royals looking a bit better. Uh, so pretty interesting slate still, even though there's only three games. Uh, that's all I have for you in this video. Thanks again for checking it out. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, hit the thumbs up button on YouTube. Hit the like button on Twitter. And if you are looking to use it for yourself, you can find those links below the video that you just watched. Thanks again. Good luck on your lineups and enjoy tonight's games.